Our first speaker tonight is Jeff Giroux. The title of his speech, Love and Drowning. That is, Love and Drowning. Jeff Giroux. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Butterflies, I, I get them every time I have to get up to speak. You know, the sensation is kind of a delicate mixture of anticipation and food poisoning. <laughs> now, the closest thing I can compare it to is dating. You remember dating. You see that special song from across the room, and maybe they see you too. And maybe they're hoping you'll say that one magical phrase. Will you go to the Olive Garden? <laughs> now, as you can tell, my dating technique is a little rusty. I have been married since the 1990s. <laughs> the closest I come to dating now, before I answer the front door, I put on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but I still remember dating. And I remember that fateful day as a young 16-year-old boy where I made the decision that I was going to date. Now, fast forward several years of painful humiliation and rejection <laughs> until a woman decided she was going to date me. But eventually it happened. I asked a woman out, she said yes. Her name was Rhonda, and she was a lifeguard. And she took her job very seriously. She had the entire lifeguard uniform. She had the sunglasses, she had the whistle, and she even had the zinc oxide that lifeguards always put on their nose. Now, for the purposes of this illustration, I was unable to find zinc oxide. What I was able to find was my son's diaper cream. <laughs> and just a quick shout out to Desitin. My nose has never been more diaper rash for me. <laughs> Well, back to Rhonda. Rhonda took her job very seriously, and she was always in this uniform. Didn't matter where we were. The car, an elevator, the top of a Ferris wheel. She was always scanning back and forth like this. <laughs> scanning back and forth, like some sort of copper tone Terminator. <laughs> so eventually, I had to ask her, I said, Rhonda, what are you looking at? And she looked at me, and she said, what am I looking at? Now, Rhonda had a very deep voice, scratching, <laughs> yelling at all the kids at the pool. But she said, what am I looking at? I'll tell you what I'm looking at. I'm looking at danger. It's all around us. You don't have to be near a pool. You can drown in a cup of water. Rhonda said this phrase all the time. You can drown in a cup of water. You can drown in a cup of water. It didn't matter what you asked. Rhonda, what time is it? You can drown in a cup of water. Rhonda, how is the money? You can drown in a cup of water. Rhonda, do you think this suit makes me look fat? You can drown in a cup of water. <laughs> but here's the thing about that. You can't drown in a cup of water. <laughs> think about everyone you know. Think about everyone they know. Think about every president that's ever lived. Think about every celebrity and all the kooky stuff they've ever done. Look, I'm going to stand here confidently right now, the double tree by Hilton, and tell you this. No one, no one has ever drowned in a cup of water. <laughs> Look at my face. Look at this cup. Now, let's just say, through some sort of Herculean, Guinness Book-worthy effort, you were able to get both your mouth and your nose in a cup at the same time. Pull the cup away from your mouth. Drown it, not drown it, drown it, not drown it. You do not need Rhonda the lifeguard for that. But Rhonda was obsessed. You could drown in a cup of water. Date night would come. She would drag me to the soup plantation. She'd stack up a bunch of chairs into some sort of makeshift lifeguard stand, and then she'd just sit there. Whistle in her mouth. Just waiting for somebody to take a step with a cup of soup. <laughs> Eventually, I'd had it. I started to imagine the rest of our lives together. I'd try to make a root beer float, and she'd just knock the scooper right out of my hands. But what about our kids? They'd be afraid to go outside if the sprinklers were on. 
<laughs> so I decided, I am going to break up with Rhonda. But here's the thing about a lifeguard. They are trained to anticipate danger. <laughs> I wouldn't get more than a couple of words in before she grabbed me, strapped me to a headboard, put a neck brace on me, wheeled me down the aisle to get married. <laughs> Luckily, at the time, Rhonda's favorite show was Baywatch. <laughs> you all remember Baywatch. David Hasselhoff, Pam Anderson. Rhonda didn't just watch it for entertainment value. Rhonda watched it as some sort of instructional video. <laughs> she was trying to perfect that one thing. You know, the slow motion job. <laughs> now, to Rhonda's credit, she was very good at the slow motion job. But it took us forever to get anywhere. Because I'm walking the normal side. And Rhonda's behind me like this, wait for me. <laughs> so one night, we're watching Baywatch. And it's a, it's a good one. It's the one where someone's at the beach and they're drowning. I mean, it's pretty much everything. <laughs> Rhonda's taking notes. And I decide, now's my chance. I'm going to escape. So I stand up. Gently take off my jacket oops, and I wrap it around a CPR dummy. Rhonda had a lot of CPR dummies. She was always practicing CPR, which, come to think of it, is why I wanted to date Rhonda. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if Rhonda is still with that CPR dummy, but if she is, I'm pretty confident they are happy together because that CPR dummy doesn't have any arms, so it's never reached for a cup of water. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd like to leave you with this. Whether you're drowning in a bad relationship, or you're in a Toastmasters event, possibly at the double trip, and you feel like you're drowning on stage, just remember this one thing. If you ever have cause to smear diaper cream on your face, <laughs> Go with Desitin. <laughs> <laughs>